Welcome back. So now we know that our system is running, we just need to figure out how to actually put data into our table. So we'll do that this lesson. And the easiest way to do is again, what is actually happening right here with the add DB context is actually it's opening up for us to also use dependency injection for the main DB context now, which is perfect. That means that I can actually use this anywhere else in my code. So let's go down to our configure area right here. What I'll do is I'll add main DB context right here and let's just call it uh, context like this. So now I actually have access for the DB context right here inside this area for the configuration. And again, think of it this way. Here we set up our configuration files that we want to use. So here we'll kind of prepare everything. And then in the actual configure method is where we actually execute the diff different things we want to do. So in this case, what I want to do is I actually want to instantiate my database. And um, that's what we're going to do. So inside my configure now, I'll say context dot and then we can do a few things. We can, for instance, say database to get access to the actual database and then say ensure deleted. Now what this is going to do right here is going to make sure that there's no database file available right now. So even if it was there on development mode, I delete it and then I create a new one. I do that by calling context again, database and then ensure created. So now I've both deleted the database if it was there and then I've created it again if it wasn't. And the create, all it does is pretty much go and look at our main DB context right here. And it says, hmm, it seems we need a table inside our database. It needs to look something like the product entity. So let's go and create that table and call it products. And then people can use that table if they want to later on. So that's pretty much what this is doing for us now. It ensures the database is created, um, but before it does that, it wants to delete it. Because if I don't have this in development and I try to do actually create the database, I'll get an exception that is already existing or I won't even try to recreate it, right? That's actually what's going to happen. And the problem with that is pretty much just that um, then I won't get, if I add new schema information, like if you go and add a new table in your database, so later on we'll add more tables, of course. If you don't have that ensure deleted, it'll actually not add that new table for you. So you'll have to start doing migration scripts and stuff like that, which is perfectly fine for production. But in development, it's just easier just to clear the table, recreate the table. That's all we have to do. So let's try and restart our application now and jump into Swagger. So we're back in Swagger. Let's try and actually refresh the page just for the fun of it. Try it out again right here and just execute once more and see if we can at least now get an empty response back. That means that our data system is now working. Now we don't have any data in here yet, so we'll try and seed the database next lesson. I wanna add one more thing before we end this though. If you go back, are you kind of annoyed that when you restart this, every time you do that, it actually pops up again with the actual application, meaning a new tab in a new browser. So if, you, if you're really annoyed by that, what you can do is you can go and actually configure that inside this properties file right here. So instead of it launching and showing your browser every time you restart, you can actually go in here and you can say, if we scroll down, you can say for the profiles called uh, InnoTech Legos for Live Web API, that's the profile I'm running right now. I can actually go and say, don't launch browser every time. I'll just say false right here. And that means the next time when I restart, it's actually not going to launch a new browser. Let me just try and restart this and see if it works. Now it shouldn't pop into a browser automatically. Now I can just go and like you just saw this video, I can just go when it's running to my page and just refresh instead if I want to. And if I don't want to refresh, in, in some cases, you just want to actually be able to just re-execute your code. So if I restart now, let me just try and do that again. I know this is just extra information right here, but I just wanted to show you. If I go back now, you'll see I normally just keep the page open and just execute again. Then I don't need to refresh and find the, the actual system. So inside the configuration file launch settings right here, you can actually go and convert instead of having launch browser automatically, you can change that. There's also ways to kind of change different browsers and stuff like that. So go and check it out yourself. This is it for this lesson right here. Now you guys know a little bit about how we can actually set up our um, database now and create it and delete it on development. Later we'll of course work with production, but for now let's do it in development. Notice you also have a small main DB, that's actually your database. So that's what we're going to look in the next lesson because right now, as I said, the data is blank. We of course want a couple of products in there. So that's what we're going to do next lesson. See you next time. Bye.